Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. How do I drag and drop number four? So up to this point, we have been experimenting with dragging and dropping, where we can drag from one item to another. So drag from and a drag to. And we use the tagging system. We use the, let's see, where's our drag item? We use the class system and we use the payload system. However, we are going to now learn to use the canceled event and actually drop it into our scene. So for example, in my drag detected here, we're filling up a payload and we're going to then do something with this payload if we drop it somewhere we don't expect it to be dropped. So when you do the drag detected, which we're doing here and we're creating our payload, we, we're good. Well, there's no real issue here. And as long as we drop it onto something like a drop two, which has the on drop event, it knows how to handle it based on the on drop. However, if you don't do that, if you drop it somewhere else, it's going to fire off, as soon as I go back here, the on drag canceled event. Let me go ahead and unplug this and show you where it's at. If we go to functions override, we can find on drag cancel. This event will fire off if it does not find an on drop. So basically we were dragging it and then we let go or we were dragging and we dropped it somewhere that doesn't accept it's going to become canceled and it's going to pass along the same information as if we dragged it too. So if you look here, we have our pointer event and our operation. We have no geometry because we didn't actually drop it onto anything. But what we care about is our operation. This is our drag drop operation, which is right here, the operation that we created. And it also contains our payload, which is what we care about. So here's an example. Let's hit play. Let's drag and drop. It works fine. But let's say I drag and drop into my scene. Well, now I have a cube that spawns in front of me with that texture. I could do this and I could repeat infinitely because this is what I've set up. So let's go ahead and look at it. The drag, let's find it first. I keep losing these things. The drag canceled event is simple. Like I said, our operation is what we care about and it fires when we drop it somewhere. So for what I'm doing, my purpose is I'm basically spawning in an actor that represents an item. Then I'm assigning the texture to it using a material parameter and that's it. Let me get rid of my drag canceled because I don't need that anymore. But that's, that's all you have to do. If you were going to use this in something more professional or more, more fully fleshed out, and it wasn't an example project, more than likely you're going to have multiple items. You're going to have actual individual meshes, maybe an apple and a pear, which isn't that much different than an apple, or a sword or a shield. Let's go with like five different pieces of armor. And they're all going to have five different meshes with five different appropriate things. What you can do when you are using your drag and you've done your drag detected and you pass along a payload put in that as an item. We have our item image. This is what we represent when we drag it, but we could also have the item mesh. And this is the mesh with its material that is used for this item. And we can pass it along, or you could even just pass along as a reference. Maybe it's based on the item ID we can pull up out of our table. That might be a little more memory performant. It just depends on how your game is set up. But the point is once we drop something, our payload is going to have all the information. We can then pull out of our payload the appropriate information. In this case, I'm getting the image. And then I'm applying that image to my item, my mesh that I'm spawning in the world. And this one's pretty simple. I'm just basically figuring out where my player is, figuring out 200 units in front of the player and setting that as a location. That's it. I'm telling it to spawn this item at this location using this texture. And this item is just simply a cube. That's all it is. It's a cube that's set when it's constructed to apply the texture that I pass in. Really simple. So if I go in here and we want to drop something into the world in front of me, like let's say for example, I'm done with this. I don't want it anymore, but we want someone else to be able to pick it up. We do this, maybe prompt the player. Do you wish to drop this item? It says, yes, boom, it's dropped in front of us. We now have these items in our world. Obviously we want to not allow them to do multiple items. They don't have it. 
but here's how you can drop into the world. You could always prompt them on the drop, for example. Do you wish to delete this? And if they wish to delete it, you just get rid of it out of their inventory. But this is how you would handle dropping something not onto a droppable recipient, not onto something that accepts a drop. It cancels the event, then you can choose what to do with it. In this case, I'm spawning because someone asked me how do you drag and drop into the world. Well, here you go. I've dragged and dropped into the world. And that's it. It's really that simple. There are other ways of doing this. You could, for example, we have a drag to here. And when we receive our drop, we're doing something with it. You could take your player's UI, their user interface. You could make a widget that simply sits in the background under everything. It could be invisible, but still accepting input events. And it could accept everything. And then you could have it handle all the dropping things. Maybe you want only certain places in the UI to accept dropping, for example, just like the middle part. Maybe you have a border and you don't want to block that out. You could do something like that. Basically create a catch all widget in the background and it will process the drop event. But if you don't really care, and most of the time you don't, you don't want to restrict your player. Your player may want to drop it up here, may want to drop it up here. They just want to get rid of it. Then you do something like that and we just drop them into the scene. That's going to wrap up the drag and drop number four video. It was showing how we could basically handle the canceled event to drop something into our scene as we are dragging it. So we are drag detected. On drag detected, we are creating an object. We are on drag canceled when I let go. We are detecting what we canceled from our payload creating a new item in our scene by spawning in a new actor based on what we dropped in and we're done you would want to handle code cleanup but again this is just a how do i this is how you get something into the scene and that's the end of our video